Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to start going over the Mechanics M1 International A level, um, the Edexcel, Pearson's Edexcel exam from June 2021, which again was affected by COVID, like the previous June's papers. But this time, they actually released the paper for that, and it was used as some sort of assessment. So I'm going to be going over this uh, paper in these set of videos, which you find. Um, all the videos collected together in the playlist in the description and also on a link at the top of this video towards the end of the video. Now I'm going to start with question number one. Um, question here about uh, momentum it seems. It says a particle P has a mass 3m and a particle Q has a mass 5m. The particles are moving towards each other in opposite directions along the same straight line on a smooth horizontal surface. The particles collide directly. Immediately before the collision, the speed of P is KU, where K is a constant, and the speed of Q is 2U. Immediately after the collision, the speed of P is U and the speed of Q is 3U. The direction of motion of Q is reversed by the collision. We've got to find in terms of M and U the magnitude of the impulse exerted on Q by P in the collision. And we've also got to find the two possible values of K in part B. All right, so let's just make a little diagram that will help us to um, understand what's going on here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw my particles as like these ball shapes. So I'm going to have, this is particle P. And let's call this particle Q. Now there's nothing to prevent me from right drawing my P here and the Q there. It doesn't make any difference really in the end or to your calculation. Okay, as long as you're consistent with your directions and stuff. Now, it says that the particle P has mass 3m, so there's 3m here. You have to be very careful to label things carefully. And the particle Q has mass 5m. That's 5m, its mass is 5m. It says that they're moving towards each other before the collision. So before the collision, they're moving towards each other. Okay. Now, immediately before the collision, the speed of P is KU. So we don't know what K is, so, but we know that it's moving in this direction if we draw a P here. And the speed of Q is 2U, and of course that's in the opposite direction. They're moving towards each other. Immediately after the collision, immediately after the collision, the speed of P is U. So, and the speed of Q is 3U. The direction of motion of Q is reversed by the collision. So I know for sure Q has changed direction, and it's now 3U in the opposite direction. As for P, we don't know whether it's changed direction according to this question. It just gives us its speed. We know that it's u, but is it this direction or this direction? We don't know. Okay, And that's the reason why in part b it says find the two possible values of k, because there's two possible situations here. But that comes for part b. Now, it says find in terms of m and u the magnitude of the impulse exerted on q by p. All right, so there's an impulse when they collide which causes a change in motion of Q. It's the impulse exerted on Q by P. And you have the, exactly the same magnitude impulse exerted on P by Q, but in the opposite direction, of course, because that direction is what changes the motion of P. But the impulse exerted on P by Q is going to act in this direction. Okay, And the impulse, the formula for the impulse, is given by the mass of the object times the change in its velocity, mv minus mu, which is just factorize it. The change in momentum of an object. The impulse is the change in momentum, which is the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity, which this is just the same formula, but just factorized to make it easy for you to calculate. But be very careful here because the, the m here stands for the mass of p. So I'll just put this is the mass of p, and this is the velocity of p, and this is the initial velocity of p. So the mass, sorry, of Q, we're looking at Q, not P, Q. Okay, we don't have enough information for P, for P yet. So this is Q, and this is Q, and this is for Q, right? So the mass of the particle Q is 5m. Its final velocity, now we've got to decide what we want to take as positive. I'm going to take the right as positive. Okay, just to, you know, normally that's what you do. So I'm going to take the right as positive here. Okay, so in that case, the final velocity of Q is 3U, positive. And the initial velocity of Q is going to be minus 2U because it's going in the opposite direction. 
to what we call positive after the collision. So before the collision, it's going this way, okay, which is opposite to our positive, and after the collision, it's going that way, which is the same as our positive. All right. So I can say that the impulse, therefore, the impulse that we need, which is the impulse exerted on Q by P, is equal to the mass, which is 5m, times the final velocity of Q, which is 3u, minus the initial velocity, which is minus 2u. So be very careful with your signs here. It's minus, minus 2u. That's going to give you plus 2u. So you're going to end up with 5m times 5u. So it's 25m mu. That's the impulse exerted on Q by P. All right, that's its magnitude. It's also positive according to our. But what we could say is they only want the magnitude of the impulse. So what we would say here, if, if they said find the magnitude and the direction, you would say that the magnitude of the impulse exerted by Q on P, by, by P on Q is equal to 25 mu, and its direction is in the initial direction of P or in the opposite direction to the initial direction of Q, okay? Something like that. But you don't have to worry about the direction here because they just want the magnitude of the impulse and not its direction, okay? So that's how you deal with part A. Then it says, find the two possible values of K. Now, how can you have two possible values of K? It's because we don't know what happened to P after the collision. It's either you in this direction or you in this direction. So there's two scenarios that we're going to have, okay? Uh, two different cases that could possibly happen um, after this collision. One could be that the direction of P was reversed, and the other one could be that the direction of P remained the same direction but just changed from KU to U. Okay, so we're going to look at the two different possibilities. One, we can say, whoops, what happened there? We can say for the first situation is that the direction of P was reversed. The direction of P is reversed okay in that case if we look at that situation then we're looking at this case here this is case one okay uh, where the P is now going in the opposite direction to what it was going first so let's look we know that the impulse exerted on P by Q its magnitude is negative 25 mu because it's in the opposite direction to what we called positive Okay, impulse has a direction, but in the first question, we only ask to give its magnitude. So we can see that we know that the impulse is equal to the mass of P times the final velocity of P minus the initial velocity of P. And the, in the impulse exerted on P is minus 25 mu, because it's in the opposite direction to what we've called positive in our question. And we know that the mass of P is equal to 3m. Okay, 3m. The final velocity of p, if we take this first case here, where the direction of p is reversed, the final velocity of p is minus u, it's going in the opposite direction to what we call as positive, and the initial velocity of p is equal to k times u. So if we put that together in this equation, we have minus 25 mu is equal to the mass, which is 3 m that's supposed to be an m here it looks like a u so bad handwriting that's 3m okay so 3m times the final velocity which is minus u minus k u all right and that will help us to find what k is so we have minus 25 m u equals minus 3 m u and you have minus 3 k m U. Now you can see that mu is a factor of each of these. You can cancel out that common factor. So we're left with minus 25 is equal to minus 3 minus 3k. So we can rearrange this. You'll end up with 3k equals minus 3 plus 25. So 3k is equal to 22. Therefore k is equal to 22 over 3. So that's one possible value of k in the first case where the direction of p is reversed. And then we have another situation, which I'll just uh, try and fit in this part here. Situation number two, where the direction of P is not reversed, where it's the same as what it was before. In, that, in this case, the situation two, I'll just write it here, 
is when VP is equal to U, where it's going to be going in the same direction, but just in a slower, at a slower speed after the collision, which is also a possibility. All right, so if that's the case, then the only difference here is this is going to be, instead of minus U, it's going to be U. So you have minus 25 MU, that's the uh, impulse, equals 3M times the final velocity. Instead of being minus U, it's going to be U. The initial velocity is still KU, so it's minus KU. Okay, so UVP minus UP. And um, that should help us now find what the other value of K is. So you have minus 25 MU equals 3 MU minus 3 K MU. Again, the MUs will cancel out. And we're left with here um, 3 K is equal to 3 plus 25. So 3k is equal to 28, therefore k is equal to 28 over 3. So those are the two possible values of k in this particular situation. So I hope that was clear. All right, there are two possible things that could happen after the collision. One is p could be moving at u, speed of u towards the same direction that it was going before. And the other is that it could have changed its direction after the collision. And that's why they're asking for two possible values of k. All right, so um, there's the answer to question number one, part A and B. I hope that was clear. Other questions that you want to watch from this particular paper will be found in the playlist that should appear in this section over here. You will see other questions about momentum and impulse. And this, uh, from clicking on this link, it will take you to the playlist for that for M1. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. At the top of the page here, you'll find a link taking you to other M1 papers. And in the description, you will find links to other papers you might want to watch, whether it's in, in the you know International A-Level at Excel, P1, P2, P3, P4, S1, or whether it's IGCSE, um, which I normally have the Cambridge uh, um, papers there. You can look for the playlists for those particular um, papers there. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.